basically a hodgepodge stew of other people's ideas, personas, personalities, vernacular, etc. And then they take that stew and that's who they present themselves to be. That is what we're talking about here. And that's a problem because if you don't know who you are, how are we going to ever know who you really are? That's how I'm looking at it now. And that was a red flag that I did not see back then and that many of you still aren't seeing today. <laughs> because I declare by the time I turn 30 years old, I will have at least a million dollars. You're hungry. Let's make a snake. Hey, popping like I'm post to. Watch out for the people that ain't close to. Speak a little something you could toast to. I ain't trying to hear about what you won't do. Moving like I'm into. Hit the ground running like the rain do. Speak a little something that you're into. I ain't trying to hear about what you've been through. Like, hold up, hold up. And even one of his popular things that he does, which is when he says grace, and he's like, time to say grace grace that is not his that is what his friends were doing 20 years ago when i hung out with them and that's where he got that from but that's just another example of something he's really known for that's not his original idea and even with all of that looking back with only knowing what i knew back then not what i know today i honestly think that we would have definitely made it longer in a relationship had i not ended it when i did and here's the reason so Back then, I was in my mid-20s. I was a homeowner, I was a business owner, and I had a full-time job and real life issues. And at that particular season in my life, I really was in a bad mental space and dealing with a lot of stress. And at a certain point, I realized that Darius couldn't see me or what I was going through. Because I was at the point where I needed support from my partner for the first time in our relationship, <laughs> I started to realize that our conversation primarily revolved around him. And even if I was able to have some of the topic be around me or get the conversation to be about me and my life and what was going on, he would eventually switch it back to himself. And then it became clear to me that there was zero sympathy or empathy for what was going on with me and in my life. And now looking back, I honestly think that's how it always was with our entire relationship. But I just didn't notice it for two years because I'm not high maintenance or high need in my relationships. I have always usually been the giver in my relationships and my life was pretty smooth and my stress levels were at a minimum during most of the time we were dating. But when things got heavy, I realized that I did not have a partner that I could lean on as much as he could lean on me. And at a point that just became not okay with me. So I remember being on the phone with him one particular day and he was on a road trip driving from Chicago to New Jersey for a camping retreat that he would do every year with LGBTQ youth. And they would do basically a two week camping retreat and he was a cook as well as one of the camp counselors. And so he would do that yearly and pretty much my job <laughs> as the supportive boyfriend was to talk to him through the majority of that road trip on the phone while he drove. And if I recall correctly, while he was there, the cell, there was no cell service. And so for those two weeks that he would be away, we could only communicate via email. And so that was another reason why we would talk through the majority of his road trip. Just kind of getting it in because <laughs> we couldn't talk for the next two weeks. Because again, we were that close. Like that was big for both of us during that time. But during this particular trip, I was starting to check out of the relationship. So I basically took advantage of those two weeks to build distance between the two of us. So by the time that he came back to Chicago, it was pretty clear that we were done. And honestly, I don't even remember if we had an official breakup conversation because especially back then, I was notorious for slowly ghosting people versus being an adult about it and having, you know, a face to face, heart to heart conversation. I pretty much would just ghost them and slowly stop talking to them. Get the stepping. Step it definitely wasn't right, but I was young. That was who I was. After we officially broke up, we lost touch for about a year. And during that year, what I now know, well, I knew then, I found out. 
he actually moved away to New Jersey and attempted to live there for a while. And he had always kind of talked about living in New York as well. So that wasn't a complete surprise. And after we broke up, I guess he felt like he didn't really have anything keeping him in Chicago. So he left. However, within about a year, he did eventually return back to Chicago. And in a different video, we'll get into what happened that caused him to be back in Chicago. Cause that's interesting too, but we can only fit so much into this video. It's already long. So by this time, online dating had really started to pick up, especially for the gays. So both of us have profiles on this particular site. Darius ends up inboxing me and we started to communicate back and forth, catching up, etc. And we eventually decided to hang out. And I don't even know if either of us expected to rekindle our relationship at all. However, I do remember having interest in someone else at that time and kind of not wanting the situation with Darius to cock block anything. I really just wanted to kind of move on at that time. So I'm honestly really foggy on if I had a wall up, if he had a wall up, if we both had a wall up, I don't remember. I just know that needless to say, we ended up hanging out again a friendship developed, which basically developed into a brotherhood from there. But it was also a slow burn once we did start to become friends. We talked a few times per week versus every day as we previously had when we were dating and we hung out occasionally. And then it eventually increased again to talking daily and seeing each other at least a couple times a week. And we were even roommates on cruises together as well. During our first cruise together, we actually went with his group of friends. And I really remember this because that trip for me was pure torture. The trip itself and being on a cruise was amazing. And I've loved going on cruises ever since. However, the group of people I was with was a whole nother story. It was their lack of decorum and just not having any tact whatsoever in public that was grieving my soul and the fact that we were in foreign countries had me nervous as heck as well because I'm like they're talking to people any kind of way the conversation you know many of them were gay and you know hitting on tour bus drivers and stuff from a different country and I'm like they don't play this kind of stuff and I even remember a time when we were in Jamaica it was Darius and I and a group of friends and we were in one of the towns and he told the people who own the restaurant that the food tastes like dirt. Literally, he said, and I remember this because the friends and I repeated this for years. It was like a running joke, like to say stuff tastes like dirt. Cause it's like, you couldn't believe that he would say that for one to anyone who was serving him. But in addition, we were in a foreign country and this was just, just one example of how brazenly disrespectful he could be at times and dismissive of people and humans in general. And that was really one of the points where I realized that Darius was actually more like the group of friends that I couldn't stomach than not. Where I used to wonder out loud and give him credit for being cut from a different cloth than them and maybe just being around them because he met them in like a pivotal struggle moment in his life and they were kind of there for him. And I kind of gave a lot of credence to that as being the reason why he was still friends with them. But what I really realized back then and even today is that he's more like them than not. It's just that he has the ability to travel and float between groups and he has the skill sets to operate at a higher level in different environments around different groups of people, whereas many of them do not. So eventually after multiple job terminations and financial struggles, Darius shared his everyday cooking idea with me. His first idea was to start the everyday cooking YouTube channel in which he would do cooking demonstrations. And back then YouTube was extremely new to still many of us. It was nowhere near what it is today. People didn't realize you could make a career out of it. And I honestly definitely did not understand YouTube on the level that I do today. But even without fully understanding YouTube at that time, I still thought it was not a far-fetched idea to create cooking videos because I figured if nothing else, he could use it as a way to advertise him being able to cater for people, etc. Because at that time he was known to cater occasionally, 
on the side and he always catered his own birthday parties and even occasions for friends and family and even including me for my own business he catered one of my events i remember him mapping out the plan for the youtube channel and sharing some of his ideas with me which eventually started to actually include me because of the fact that i was detail oriented and because i had the ability to make his apartment camera ready so within a week or so before we actually shot the first video i started designing his set and of course, since he didn't have any money back then, I ended up decorating free of charge, although I had a remodeling business at the time and definitely charged for those type of services. But Darius at the time was my brother friend who I wanted to see win. So I saved him money on buying things as much as I could and even went as far as to decorate using things out of my own home and going as far as pulling pictures off my own walls. And I still actually remember the first day we shot a video for the Everyday Cooking channel. Somehow at that point, I had also become an unpaid videographer for his YouTube channel as well. So I basically worked for a plate of whatever he would be cooking for the two to three videos that we would shoot during each Sunday. But I remember even with the moment he started with his intro to that first video, even with the bloopers and retakes, I instantly saw something special with him in front of that camera that was different than the everyday Darius I knew personally. There was a naturally polished feel with him even with that first video. And it was honestly great. And being a part of this wasn't far-fetched for me because I've always been a creative person and I've always enjoyed working behind the scenes. Even at that point, I had amateur experience with creating a documentary, small plays, and even event planning. So participating in something like that was right up my alley. However, what I didn't realize was that I was slowly being pulled into something that was becoming a job for no pay. But nevertheless, in the beginning, Darius, his BFF at the time, and myself, we had a ball laughing and joking while putting the videos together. His BFF would be working on the scripts for the videos. I would be working on the videography, set design, cleaning up behind Darius because he's junky. <laughs> As many of you are, have found out, especially through watching his cooking videos, Darius is definitely a junky and filthy person. And so I was a person moving the dish rag or getting you know, dishwashing liquid out of the view and making sure things that were in the camera's view looked as tidy as possible. And even with one of his apartments, I spent three days hand painting the backsplash for his kitchen because he couldn't afford to buy towel. So I used leftover paint I had around the house and did something creative to try to give some sparkle to his kitchen, which you can still see in the background of many of those beginning videos today. So that was probably my last good experience with Darius before things started to take a full turn. I mean, there were little glimpses of things there when he started to realize, you know, he was actually getting a little bit of popularity in the brief time that we were helping him do the videos. But that wasn't the demise of our friendship because that was his thing. I had my own thing. His BFF had his own thing. We all had our own purposes and passions. And so that was what it was. It was like, do your thing. We're supporting you. We got you. However, where things took a real turn was when Darius pulled us into a business venture with him, both me and the BFF. And I'm not going to get too deep into it because of the fact that I'm going to talk about the businesses and the schemes and the crimes. And this all fits in that same category, just that I'm personally a part of it. But in summary, we started a food truck company together. Darius, at a certain point, stole the money out of the bank account, took the truck that we all bought together, sold the truck on Craigslist without us knowing. So I'll throw that up here <laughs> for you guys to see. And then ghosted us for the most part. And so that was pretty much the demise of our friendship. Now, there are going to be people who say, well, why are you doing all this? Why didn't you just sue him? Well, for the slow people in the back of the room, you can't just always sue people. Trying to sue someone doesn't mean that you're going to get anywhere with it. And so we did do that. I had my attorney send out a letter, which you'll see here, putting that up. And also I had a stack of documents proving, you know, that he had scammed us. And so including text messages and all of that sort of stuff. And so we ended up speaking with an attorney once we realized we would have to sue my attorney did not do litigation and so we found another attorney and started to look into suing darius thankfully the attorney that we ended up meeting with was very honest and he told us that at that time he had a three thousand dollar retainer 
and that was just to get the ball rolling with everything. He explained to us that we definitely had a, a good case and he had no doubt that we would win because we had the contract and it proves that he brazenly disregarded the contract, which he does all the time. Like contracts mean nothing for Darius. So if you have, if you're presently dealing with him or plan to deal with him or any negotiating with him on anything, contracts mean nothing to him because of the petty amounts that he usually steals from individuals. So with us at that point, it was nearly $20,000 a piece that we had invested. He stole all the money out of the accounts, closed the accounts, all kind of craziness, forged our signatures, everything to make all this happen. And what the attorney told us is that he knows that we would win. That wouldn't be a problem. He said the issue is the person you're dealing with. And he stated this person has already filed for bankruptcy. He stated that he obviously doesn't have money based on you know what he's doing, but he stills now and he has a little money. But longer story short, he said that you can go through all of this if it's for principle. But the truth is, even when we won, there was no guarantee that we would get our money back. And most likely we wouldn't because he could file bankruptcy, skip town, do all these other things, which is what he ended up doing. So thankfully <laughs> we were saved by this attorney who was very honest with us and didn't just take our case and take more of our money. So we decided at that point, it was not worth it to put good money after bad money. We were already in the hole. Why start adding more money to that to not ever see it just for the principle of it. And so we let it go. We let it go in the sense of, we knew and we said many times that it would eventually catch up to him. Karma and the fact that we weren't the only ones, it was hundreds of other people. We ended up later finding out in Chicago through the Fresh Go scam and through the Cupcake Gallery scam and some other stuff too that we'll talk about. So I'm gonna break all of those down. But in summary, that is my experience. That is where I fit in and what he did to me personally. So for those DYs who think that I'm just clout chasing, I don't know how you clout chase your own life story. I, that's beyond me because what I'm talking about is my own personal experiences and life story. He happens to be a player in it, but it's my life. So that's what we're doing here. So now that we fast forward, you know, a decade, looking back, I now see that those beginning scams in Chicago, starting with the Cupcake Gallery, myself, the Fresh Go, and all of that, now I see that that was the beginning of Darius Crooks starting to victimize the working class because he started with corporate America with the payroll company and he got caught up really quickly. And I guess he realized at a certain point that's not as easy to pull off as it is with the everyday common folk. And I know there are a lot of naysayer D wives who are trolling my platforms and they're saying, you're just bitter. You're damn right. I'm bitter. And not because the end of the friendship, because I have the gift of goodbye. You can ask. There's a few people who could tell you that <laughs> that's not the issue. My issue was a person who I only had good intentions for only wanted to see succeed, rode hard for, gave of myself for and loved dearly stole from me unnecessarily. That is my personal issue with this situation. And yes, if that makes me bitter, then so be it. And it would make you bitter too. And even with the friendship, let's say he felt like it wasn't serving him anymore. He could have just moved on. He didn't have to steal from us. He didn't have to become a predator. He could have just moved on with his life and we could have moved on with ours. And some are asking, why speak out now after 10 years of being silent? Well, as I stated earlier, it's not like I didn't try to do anything. I actually tried to sue him myself. It just wasn't worth pouring more good money after bad. So I had to cut my losses. In addition, I didn't have a platform 10 years ago to be able to warn people to look out for this predator. And on a personal level, I also wasn't out with my sexuality. So outing him about his crimes and potential being a predator also meant that I would have to out myself and my sexuality, which very few people knew about at that time before I was ready. I had to go through my journey and my seasons to deal with that to become comfortable in my own skin. So that was another reason for my silence, which I think he kind of knew as well, which even back then I knew had I spoke out about him, that would probably be one of the first things that he would go after is saying that I was his ex, which 10 years later is the first thing he did do when he brought up my name It's talked about how I was his ex. So imagine me doing this 10 years ago when I wasn't out and then being outed and having to deal with that. So, that was one of the other reasons. And also personally hearing 
tons of stories of those that he has victimized since me made me feel a certain level of guilt and hurt for the fact that I, maybe in my silence, emboldened him over the past decade to do more and to cause destruction in more people's lives. And lastly, my core, I know that this was also God ordained for such a time as this. There's a whole story from a spiritual perspective of how this all came back to light, of how Darius ended up even being back on my radar after honestly wiping him from my life, from my mind for nearly a decade. There was a lot happening behind the scenes between me and God that now I know why. <laughs> I didn't know why at the time, but God put him back in my life in an undeniable way for a reason. And now I see why. I didn't understand it at the time, but now I see why. And also in regards to this season, there's a coalition. There are a bunch of people. So maybe it took for there to be a large enough number of people who were able to expose him, come together, support each other. It's not one individual. He can shut down one, but there's like hundreds of more. <laughs> so I think this was all a part of it. It needed to happen the way that it is happening. My experience and my way of sharing is different than others. And it takes all of us. It takes a village to make this happen. And so although I knew one day me and the other mutual friends that we both had at the time that are still my friends, but not his, we all used to say it's going to catch up to him one day. I definitely did not think that I would have anything to do with it. I just thought maybe I'll be watching from afar, but all things happen for a reason. And so I am here. I'm going to use my platform to expose this predator in hopes to prevent more victims. It's also honestly cathartic to be able to share something I've held in for years for a multitude of reasons. I'm able to finally share and I feel free. And unfortunately or fortunately, I think Darius is finally not feeling free to be a predator. As I've started to catch up with his life over the past few weeks now, I've seen a lot of changes from the person I knew to the person that he is today. And he's gone from being an occasional light drinker, like he was a very sporadic drinker back in the day. He's gone from that to a daily drinker. He never used any drugs whatsoever, all while I knew him. And now he requires edibles to go to sleep at night. He even writes in a response to one of his followers that he needs the edibles in order to bring his mind to rest at night so that he can sleep. And I'm wondering, and where some people think he's talking about needing it to calm his mind from always thinking about business, I'm wondering, is it him trying to calm his mind from being haunted by all of the evil he's done over the past 10 to 20 years, probably be honest. But even to this day, Darius has an inability to accept any wrongdoing to me or anyone else. He acts as if all of this happening all around him has nothing to do with him and he's confused at why people are coming out the woodwork with accusations of all of his wrongdoings. That's because he doesn't take accountability for anything. He created all of this destruction and all of this toxicity and all of the survivors of his predatory practices that are now coming together and banding together to speak out and expose him. This is his doing. And even in his own blog, he writes that he has done some horrible things in his life. And trust me, he has. And I think it's key to consider what that means when someone says they've done some horrible things in life, because none of us are perfect. But how many of us would define the things that we have done wrong in our life or messed up on or done wrong to other people as horrible? So that alone should let the D wives know that this ain't your average infractions or missteps in life as you're learning and navigating. These are some egregious, inhumane things that this ninja has done to people. So that alone should make the D wives question his character and legitimacy as he's running these fire cells to take advantage of them because this is what he does when he gets caught up everywhere he's been as it's starting to come down on him he then does a big, massive scam to make a bunch of money so he has money to escape with. Move on to the next scam. And that's what he's doing right now, and they're falling for it. 
it is what it is. They'll see his truths like the rest of us have seen his truths through our own experiences. But even if the D wives don't want to, it doesn't matter because there are plenty of government agencies investigating as you watch this video, putting all the pieces together for him finally to be held accountable for his schemes and crimes. But that's it for this first video in the Surviving Darius Crooks series. I made it. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> this was more than I thought it was going to be to try to get through. Bringing up all of this, remembering things that I had kind of forgot and suppressed or whatever, and having to organize it as concisely as I could. I don't know. When I edit this, I'll see if it makes sense to you guys. But yeah, this was a lot. This was a lot. But I feel free. I feel lighter. I feel lighter. And once this is out, I think I'll feel even lighter. Even with the trolls, because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> Yet, it was definitely worth it, because now we've covered an overview of his story of origin, which unfortunately has set the foundation for one of the biggest predators in social media history thus far, allegedly. So in the next episode, you can expect for us to start our journey, giving an overview of each scam and business that placed many lives in this journey of surviving Darius Crooks. So with that, if you listened to this video, comment below, hashtag Darius Crooks. Yes, hashtag Darius Crooks. Also, if you are new to this channel, this would be a great time for you to hit that subscribe button below and join one of the most evolved families in these YouTube streets. Also, whether you're a subscriber or not, please like this video below to help us grow. With that, video is long enough, not gonna prolong it. Till next time, until I upload the next video, make sure to take care and be blessed. Peace. All right, goodbye. Hey, popping like I'm post to. Watch out for the people that ain't close to. Speak a little something you could toast to. I ain't trying to hear about what you want.